Yesterday, I turned in a ghostwriting project to a client. My next ghostwriting client does not start until Monday, and it is Wednesday, and that means all I have to do all day is work on my horror novel. Rosa and I had a great start to the day. It's kind of like freakishly spring weather temporarily here in Texas, so we took a like two and a half mile walk this morning, and it was just really relaxing and really nice. And when I got home, I took my time. I knew I was gonna have Lisa's live stream at 10 o'clock, so I just kind of relaxed and watched some videos and made my coffee and enjoyed a slow morning for once <laughs> and, um, and didn't pressure myself to jump right into work. And then Lisa's live stream started, and if you missed it, uh, again, if you're able to jump in on these live streams with us, it's 10, 10 a.m. Wednesday mornings, Central Standard Time. Uh, 11 o'clock EST. It's just always a good time. Today we were having a lively conversation about that wild incident recently where a romance author apparently had faked her death, her unaliving herself for two years, uh, which is a whole thing. And then also about the concept of AI writing novels and writing screenplays and apparently getting to the point where that is being done at a semi-successful rate and what that means for, for writers. Novel. I'm over the past five years, 10 years, little things that were uh, industry standards are disappearing. Mm -hmm. and we're getting less and less stories and characters that stand out as being, hey, that's a really interesting character. So what is Hollywood going to borrow from when they're making those movies to make those characters? We're going to get very flat, same, mm -hmm. and same. everything everything that you look at as your enjoyable entertainment is going to be distilled down and flattened out through the use of this. But I think that there will, I hope that there will always be the need for that human magic because that's how we connect. I don't know. Maybe it's something no, in your brains. I agree. I, the, the thing that I think about is um, with AI is I can see it replacing a certain kind of ghostwriting that doesn't make me sad or worried for my own career at all. Like the other day I got a request on Readsy and I get these a lot from, it's, it's a small company and they're right. like, they're looking to churn out like rapid release books on right. Amazon and they have them all plotted and thought out and they want to pay me like, a couple hundred dollars to write a 70,000 word book, which is ridiculous, but AI could do that and it would be the exact kind of, sorry, tripe that they're looking for. <laughs> and if they knew how to market it, more power to them. But I think there's always going to be readers out there who aren't looking for that. So it doesn't really yeah. bother me. <laughs> I, I think that that's a really good point, Eva. Um, I think that there, I think there's so much truth to that. I so far. So much truth. All I've done, as far as Kith goes, as far as my horror novel goes, is responded to the remaining questions, or the remaining comments on last week's video. If you missed it, I will link it up here. But I'm starting this whole series where I'm gonna share as many details as I can about this horror novel that I'm writing without being too spoilery, because I kind of want to crowdsource just ask you guys for your input your thoughts and your ideas and last time i shared that this book is set in the fall of 1995 and i was looking for just your memories of that time period if you were around <laughs> during that time uh, things that were kind of in the zeitgeist uh, pop culture politics whatever what what was that time like for you because i have a large cast of characters that range in ages from 15 to 70 something and yeah, I just want to get all of those delightful 90s details in there. And you guys did not disappoint me. Oh my gosh, it took me a while to go through all of those comments. And I'm going to, the next step is I'm going to be importing all of them and kind of organizing them into my Scrivener document because I'm going to forget a lot of this stuff. Uh, but yeah, y'all have been reminding me of so many things uh, that that I definitely need to include. Someone had this delightful comment about how they had this their memory is more just a sense of almost foreboding uh, just because of things that were in the news at the time. And there was just this kind of another commenter mentioned the satanic panic, which this is a horror novel, guys. Of course, the satanic panic is going to come into play in this story. Uh, it's set in rural Texas. Like, come on. 
Um, anyway, it gave me just this memory came out of nowhere for me in 1990. I was completely obsessed with The Simpsons. Honestly, if you ask me to rank my favorite television shows of all time throughout my entire life, The Simpsons would still probably be number one. I started watching it when it was just shorts on the Tracy Ullman show, I was like, I don't know, I guess eight years old at the time. And when it got, when it became like its own show, I was just, I was so excited. So the story is that um, I, I was 10 years old in 1990 and there was this one day where my mom agreed to let me, I was gonna be home by myself just for like a couple hours after school, really briefly. I think it was, I was taking the bus home and my mom was going to get my sister and maybe they had something to do and I had never stayed at home by myself before and I was gonna do it and I was very excited I felt very grown up very very grown up and my mom very very thoughtfully recorded on VHS tape of course the previous night's episode of The Simpsons so that I could watch it when I got home and I was also very excited about that so I got home walked into an empty house was I will admit it I was a coward as a kid I was afraid of a lot of things and I, I immediately was like oh this isn't this is a little bit creepy but I you know I think I got a snack from the kitchen and I went into the living room and I popped in the tape and I started watching The Simpsons well it was the episode where uh, I think it's called Krusty Gets Busted it's the first real Sideshow Bob episode the episode where he becomes a villain Kelsey Grammer voicing, voicing Sideshow Bob and he just like does this absolutely maniacal laugh. <laughs> and it scared the heck out of me. And I left the empty house, locked the door, and sat in the driveway waiting for my mom to come home. Yeah, that episode absolutely just, I don't know, I don't think it would have scared me had I not been home alone, but I, I don't think I ever, not never stayed home again, but not any time after that did I have any interest in being a latchkey kid. I was just too much of a chicken to handle it. So anyway, I related to that feeling of foreboding. Thanks for the memory. I actually mean that, that <laughs> memory made me laugh. So uh, I am importing all of y'all's comments into my Scrivener document. That's what I'm working on right now. And I, I think I'm just gonna really focus today on going through everything I have so far in my Scrivener document and figuring out what's going to be the next best step for brainstorming this novel because what I have, what I have a lot of is backstory, like tons and tons of backstory. So the foundation for this book is there. The foundation for the horror premise and the things that are going to start happening is all lined up. And I also have my characters pretty fleshed out. Um, I know who they are as people really well, I think, and I know what's motivating them. I don't know exactly what they're going to do or what's going to necessarily happen to all of them because I want to explore that a little bit more as I plot, but I do think I know those characters a little bit better now. So I'm not sure what I'm gonna be working on today or what I'm gonna need your help on yet, but hopefully after I give this a little read and get my head more around where where I am and how much information I have, I'll be ready to move on to the next step, if that makes sense. Okay, so I just spent most of the last sprint reading through everything I had in my Scrivener document. Like I said, it's mostly the backstory stuff, but I do have some character profiles really sketched out. And I had also started a, like a document that's just on scene ideas, like random scenes that I know I see in the book that I want to figure out where they go somewhere. Now, if you watched my video on writing a multi POV novel, like how to plan it, which I will link up here, you'll know that's a big part of my process. I have already done some of the steps from that video. I have a, I have worked out kind of the character chart and I know their secret, their want, their need, etc. And like I said, I have the, the timeline, the whole backstory leading up decades until the start of the novel in the fall of 1995. And again, much longer explanation in that video, but basically what I do is I use those two kind of charts as a scene idea generator. I had gotten already to that point last summer 
and I had come up with some scene ideas. And I also know, like I said in last week's video, that the structure of this book, because it's based on an urban legend in this town about a young boy who back during the Dust Bowl saw one family member die of dust pneumonia every Sunday for six Sundays in a row. And the start of this book, kind of the inciting incident, the catalyst is there is a blackout that is unexplained in this town on a Sunday and another one the following Sunday and it happens for six Sundays in a row. And it's tied into this urban legend and other things are happening. But that's the structure of this book is going to be, it takes place over the course of six weeks with the blackout every Sunday being like a kind of a linchpin kind of a thing. And all of the characters experience different things during the blackout. They have different pieces to the puzzle and eventually they come together to hopefully solve why this is happening before it's too late and yeah I'm gonna have to be really vague with that point anyway I'm trying to figure out what would be the next best thing to to brainstorm because I just have I have just so many pieces here and not really a clear idea on how I want to start putting them together so you guys know my favorite thing to do um, and I recommend everybody do this is to write a really short pitch for the book. I had art, I had started doing that as well last summer and I have several different pitches written out. Um, I, I have one that's kind of, I mentioned last week that the title of the book Kith is the surname of a family, kind of the perfect family in this town and none of them are my POV characters. All of my POV characters are in this family's orbit and we get to know more about this family and there is something very weird about this family um, through the eyes of all these other characters. So I have one pitch that kind of focuses on the family and then I have another pitch that kind of just focuses almost on the town and the premise and what is going on in the town in general. I also have one pitch that focuses on who I would consider to be my main character, the one who's going to get most of the page time compared to all of the other characters. And I think, I think, even though it's not very good, it's very wordy. It's a, it's not as um, short and pithy as I would like a pitch to be, but we're in early stages here, so it's okay. I think that's the pitch I'm going to share with you guys. So my main character, her name is Dawn Langley, and... I will get a little bit more into her in a second, but she is the character who is centered in this pitch. So here it is. In the fall of 95, a pragmatic 911 dispatcher in a rural Texas town deals with increasingly strange emergency calls during a series of unexplained Sunday blackouts that gets locals buzzing about an urban legend from the Dust Bowl days coming to life. When the boy from that legend, said to haunt local fields as he hides from the devil, runs right into her trailer park, she's forced to question whether the legend is more fact than fiction. So that is going to be Dawn's piece of the puzzle, her side of the story, as she is face to face dealing with this seemingly very real boy from this urban legend from the Dust Bowl days. And also as a 911 dispatcher, she's actually the supervisor, she's going to be hearing every time a blackout happens and she is working she's going to be hearing all of the kind of crazy stories and piecing together what's going on all over the town so question for you guys i have done a lot of research on 911 dispatchers there's actually a lot of really great helpful videos that are like day in the life of a 911 dispatcher here on youtube and there's a lot of particularly interesting stuff about that job during the 90s when remember cell phones were were around but not super common and what i want to know from you guys in this last minute of this last sprint on lisa's live stream is what are some of the wildest whether it's funny or scary stories you've heard about 911 calls have you ever had to make a 911 call under weird circumstances, just tell me your 911 stories if you have one. And real quick, I'll tell you mine. It's a funny one. When when I was little, my younger sister, uh, well, I'll just put it this way. The police showed up to our house 
and none of us knew why until we found my little sister hiding in the bathtub because she was scared because she had learned how to call 911 in school and decided to do it and when the police actually came she hid in the bathtub we probably all have stories like that right so i'm just trying to think of all the different crazy sad funny terrifying things that a 911 supervisor might be dealing with you know just in general much less during something crazy like a bunch of unexplained blackouts so share your stories with me in the comments below so we finished up on the live stream i took rosa out had a little lunch and when i got back i had something in my inbox the first past pages for what'll i do without you and i just wanted to show you guys because it's always fun when you see your book in actual book form for the first time and speaking of, I have seen the cover, I think I told you guys that, and I'm not allowed to share it yet, but it's gonna be fun. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. I can't wait to show you guys what it looks like. But anyway, so here's the title page, and da da da. You know who I dedicated it to. Where did it go? There it is. Of course, I mean, who else? So the cutest thing about this is that, you know, I've got these three characters, Addie, that's the girl, Max is the dog, and Darwin is my penguin. And at the bottom of every page, we've got a little character icon. So there's Addie. And here's Max. And Darwin. Look at that fat little penguin. <laughs> so anyway, first pass pages to do, but they look pretty light, so I don't think this is gonna take me too long and I've got over a week to do it anyway. I do have to say, I think, I know I've shared with you guys a million times in the past that basically every book I've ever published, the publisher has bumped the pub date at least once. And that did happen with my previous three Scholastic books, although that was in each case very much due to the pandemic and the kind of ripple effect it had on the printing presses closing and all of that stuff. For this book, so far, it's not just running on time. I feel like they're almost ahead of schedule, like the turnaround on every round of revisions and copy edits and now first pass is like, I, I'm not talking about my turnaround, I mean them on their end. They're on it. It's really impressive. So I actually, I mean, knock on knock on wood somewhere. <laughs> but uh, I, I think this book might actually come out in the fall of 2023 as it was originally scheduled. Wouldn't that be, wouldn't that be something? So anyway, I'm going to keep working on Kith. I, I, my plan is to spend at least a little bit of time in this document every day, but that's gonna be it for this vlog. I want your, my, my question for you today is about 911 calls. I just wanna hear your crazy 911 stories, whether they're gonna make me laugh or gonna make me cry. All of them are welcome because this character, Dawn, I feel like, you know, she's, I, I believe she's in her early 40s. She's been a dispatcher pretty much her whole career and now she's a supervisor. So she's seen, or I guess heard some stuff, you know what I mean? And she's a very, she's got a very tough exterior. She's not, she's kind of a no nonsense person. I think that makes her very good at her job because I feel like you, you hear such terrible things when you have a job like that, that you have to toughen yourself in a certain way, but it also makes her vulnerable in any way, other ways that I'm looking forward to um, <laughs> exploiting or destroying maybe throughout the course of the story. That'll be fun. So yeah, tell me your 911 stories and uh, I look forward to adding more of your ideas to my doc. And thank you guys for your help on this. It's really, it's keeping me excited and motivated so far. So I'm, I'm ready to keep going with this project and I hope your writing is going great this week and you have a great week and I'll see you next week, how many times can I see week, with another video. Bye.